Hey what's going on guys welcome back to the channel in today's video I'm going to show you how you can create these cool moving gradients or liquid gradients inside DaVinci Resolve. Now it's actually quite simple let's start by dragging in our fusion composition onto the timeline then let's go to the fusion page where we'll be creating this animation. So I'm going to start off by right clicking and go to arrange tools and make sure that the to grid is selected and then we're going to start off by dragging in our background node. So let's take a look at this background node on the left side of our viewer. You can just simply drag it or you can press the one key on your keyboard to view this on the left monitor. All right once that's done then you can click on this background node make sure that is selected and then you can click on this lips mask tool to create a shape out of it and then we can just resize it and position it uh, anywhere that you want let's just position it over here and then what I'm going to do is go to background and change the color so I'm going to click on it and I'm going to change it to a different color so you can go with any color that you want let's start with this one and after the background node hit your spacebar and search for drop shadow not the drop shadow you have a search for shadow just make sure you click on the shadow and click on add now if we take a look at this shadow node we'll see nothing happens so you just have to change the offset x and then you'll see the copy of your ellipse that's basically a shadow uh, but we're going to use this as a way to create more more than one shape in this node tree and then we're going to change its color so let's pick any color that we want so let's give it a red and click on OK. If you change the size of ellipse, you can see the size of your shadow will also change. Basically, these two are linked, so that's how it will work. Now we're going to copy this, Control C, and I'm going to paste it over. And uh, we're just going to merge these two together. So I'm going to grab in a merge node, which is this icon over here. So just drag it in, and I'm going to connect the shadow to the merge, and I'm going to connect the merge with the shadow. The second shadow node now this will result in another merge node so we can just view this by dragging it onto the viewer and now we can select our ellipse which is the second ellipse over here and we can just change its position so we're going to move it somewhere over here and we can just play around with the size try to get some uh, different sized um, uh, shapes inside and we can also go to background and change its color so we can click and change it to any color that we want let's go with this one and on the shadow node we are going to change the position so let's just bring it closer something like that or maybe over here it doesn't really matter so we can just we basically have to you know fill in this entire composition with these shapes so we can just do that like so we're going to just repeat this process and i'm going to keep on copying and pasting these over and i'm just going to connect these up like that view the merge and then i'm going to change the position make sure the ellipse is selected and change the position okay and let's bring it over here and change the size try to get a random look and change the you can change the shadow position maybe put it over here and change the background color so we can go with a different color this time and in the shadow as well we can just go with a different color similarly you have to do this until you fill your entire composition with these shapes so i'm just going to fast forward this part and i'll be back when i'm done Right, I think now this looks pretty okay. We can later on uh, with this merge node, we can just increase the size on this merge node and we can like fill in this area. But uh, I'll show you that later. So after this, after you finish with your shapes, then have the merge node, make sure you select it and then hit shift spacebar. And we are going to search for displace node, click on add and this displace node needs a uh, fast noise so which is this second icon so i'm going to drag it in and i'm going to connect it with this displace so if you take a look at the fast noise on the right side now you'll see that whenever i make any change to the fast noise uh, this will be applied on this displace node so we're going to 
show the displace node on the left side so you can see that i'll go back to the fast noise and make changes and these changes will affect the shape and it will distort the distort our shape and that's exactly what we want so you can just play around with these different settings i think this looks fine so after the displaced node uh, what i'm going to do is actually let's just um, you know maybe displace this a bit more at least something like that uh, but you can later at later point you can come back to this fast noise and change some settings if you think your gradient doesn't look nice you can just change it anytime you want so it's kind of procedural so that's really good after the displaced node we are going to add another node which is going to be directional blur so search for directional blur and click on add and let's take a look at this on the right side uh, in the length i'm going to set this to 0 0.0.5 0 i think that's a good start and then on the angle i'm going to make it 90 all right something like that just so that we can see this a bit better i'm just going to add quickly add a background to this so i'm going to drag in this background node and um, actually i'm just going to put it over here and after the background i'm going to add in a merge like so connect this up with the merge and uh, i'm going to connect the displace to the merge and we're going to connect the merge to the directional blur okay so now you can see the background behind your directional blur so yeah, you can play with the fast noise and you can also go to the displace node and it has some settings as well which you can play around so let's um, try the refraction strength and uh, you can see that it really distorts the look of your gradient uh, but i'm just gonna like keep it as it is for now so let's just move ahead with the next step so after this directional blur we are going to add another node which is going to be vortex so click on add let's take a look at this vortex on the right side and uh, let's zoom out a little and we can just increase the size of this vortex and there you have it you can see that we have this swirly background in this vortex so let's click on it and we can also change the amount so we can control the power over here i kind of like this 0 0.2 so i'm just going to keep it like that um, so you can play with the different settings uh, size you already did and then we have the angle which also changes uh, the direction uh, we don't want to do anything with the scale in here we'll be animating this inside our merge over here which is this last one under all these shapes so let's animate this uh, using this merge so click on that you can see that if i change the center x after some time it is going to lose all these boundaries and you'll notice uh, this black background so i'm going to undo this and uh, under edges i'm going to change the canvas uh, i'm going to change it from canvas to wrap now if you change the center x you can see that you'll have a repeating kind of uh, gradient going on so let's quickly create keyframe at the first frame and we're also going to create keyframe on angle so let's go to the very end and change the position so i'm going to change the position and uh, i'm also going to change the angle so yeah that's it that's how easy it is to create this animation inside this uh, background it kind of looks like the liquid is flowing finally what you can do is you can after this vortex node you can add a blur maybe you can add a box blur to it and click on add let's take a look at it and it adds a bit of uh, blur to it so you can just control it and it i mean you can just reduce it down this will like help you to blend the edges of your gradient if that is what you want uh, you can also toggle it off and see if that makes any change so yeah you can just apply that and play with the settings and just finally connect it up with the media out so now you can go back to your edit page and uh, here you will see your gradient liquid gradient animation inside your timeline obviously you can go back and you know create more of these shapes you can go into the fast noise change the change the way it looks i mean the possibilities are really endless with this uh maybe i'll just undo this and you can see that <laughs> sometimes the default settings are the best settings let's just leave that to default and uh yeah so that's pretty much it guys uh thank you so much for watching this video i hope you learned something new if it did then please make sure you like the video and also subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next one